Hi, I'm Angelica Carpenter, curator of the Arnie Nixon Center, and I want to welcome you to the Arnie Nixon Center's exhibition, Down the Rabbit Hole, with Lewis Carroll and Leonard Weisgard. We hope you'll get to see some new translations of a story that is familiar to everybody, Alice in Wonderland. Lewis Carroll was the pen name of the author whose real name was Charles Lutwidge Dodson. Um, Dodson, or I'll call him Lewis Carroll, was a mathematics tutor at Oxford University. That was his day job. And then his hobby was that he wrote children's books. He used the name Lewis Carroll for his children's books, and we think it was to protect his reputation as an academic. He also published academic works under his real name. He was born in 1832 in the county of Cheshire in northern England. And when he went to Oxford in 1851, Oxford was all male. All of the students were men, all of the faculty were Anglican clergymen, and they were not allowed to marry. So it was an all male kind of town. But at one point, Christ Church, which was the college that Lewis Carroll went to, hired a dean who was a married man, Henry Little, it was his name, with children. And so it was very unusual to have a married man and a family, but they came and they were allowed in. And Lewis Carroll was really happy because he came from a large family. He was the third of 11 children. And he had a very happy childhood and he missed his brothers and sisters. So when the dean moved in, when the new dean moved in, he made friends with him and he made friends with his family. At the same time that the new dean came to Christ Church, Lewis Carroll bought a camera, and he learned to use it in the deanery garden. His favorite subjects were the three daughters of the dean, Edith, Alice, and Lorena Little, and he used to take pictures of the girls to learn how to use his camera. And as he had done for his brothers and sisters, he told the little girls stories to help them hold still while he was taking their picture. Now we have some things that belonged to him. In this case here, we have his cribbage board, and we have a letter that he wrote. We also have a letter that the real Alice, Alice Little, wrote when she was married. Her name was Hargreaves then. And we have one of the most famous photographs that he ever took of a model named Exie Kitchen. So these are some things that he really touched and handled. Alice Little, the middle daughter, was really Lewis Carroll's muse. And one day when he had told the three little girls a wonderful story that she loved about a little girl who fell down a rabbit hole, she said, oh, Mr. Dodgson, I wish you would write out Alice's adventures for me. And he did. He wrote out the story by hand, and he illustrated it himself, and he gave it to her for Christmas. And that's how Alice got started. But later, when Lewis Carroll thought that he could publish the book commercially, he realized that his drawings were not up to the job. And so he arranged to hire John Tenniel, who was the primary artist for Punch magazine, a primary cartoonist, that is, to do the illustrations. And in this case, we have some things that are related to Tenniel, a picture of him and a letter that he wrote. In this case is an accordion that's called a flutina that used to belong to the real Alice, Alice Little. She was a very talented person. She was an artist, she was a musician, she played the flutina. But in those days, girls, even though she lived at Oxford University, girls were not allowed to attend Oxford. And so Alice and her sisters were educated at home while her brother was sent to boarding school. The original Alice's Adventures in Wonderland was published in 1865, and it's never been out of print. And by the 1880s, it was so famous that Lewis Carroll decided to publish the original version, the, the handwritten version that he had illustrated for Alice Little. So this first book that's open is um, a replica of that book, but it does show you his handwriting and the pictures that he drew. And we do have an 1888 edition of it as it appeared. This book sold and continues to sell, and he gave the money to charity. And he had to borrow the original book back from Alice Little to have it photographed so that he could have it published as a facsimile. In this case, we have some of the modern illustrations of the Alice books. And on the top shelf 
is the book that more or less inspired this whole exhibition. It's a combined edition of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and the sequel, Through the Looking Glass, illustrated by Leonard Weisgard in 1949. And it was when I bought some of the original art for that book that I first thought about having this exhibition that would bring together Lewis Carroll and Leonard Weisgard. About five years ago, I bought five illustrations, original art by Leonard Weisgard for his 1949 Alice. And um, those are the five pieces here that have gray mats. Later on, his family loaned me these other two pieces to show in the exhibition. Anyway, when I bought those five pieces of art, it was some of the first time that the family had ever sold Leonard Weisgard's art, and they were very excited that I had bought it for the library. And I bought not just the color illustrations, but also the black and white chapter headings down here. Anyway, they were very pleased that I had bought this art, and um, they suggested to me that perhaps we would someday like to consider having an exhibition of Leonard Weisgard's art, and that's really what started the idea for this exhibition down the rabbit hole with Lewis Carroll and Leonard Weisgard. We've been working on it for five years. Um, in this case, we have some felt sculptures by Alice Weiner, and we have some French Limoges china that features Alice illustrations. Then we move over to the next case, which has spin-offs, um, take-offs on the Alice story, themes for other books, and a graphic novel. In this case, we have puzzles and games that were based on the Alice stories, and Lewis Carroll loved to invent puzzles and games, so that's appropriate. In this tall case, we have movies, items related to the movies, and we have a movie script that's a storyboard with illustrations, and we think it's one of only four copies in the world. So it's a rare copy of a 1939 movie script. And the final case over here, this low one, has products that are based on Alice books, and Lewis Carroll was one of the first, first, first authors to um, invent products to go along with his book. So there's a replica in here of a biscuit tin that he made that has illustrations from Through the Looking Glass on it. And in, to Lewis Carroll, biscuits would be cookies. So he had the idea to make products that were based on his books and sell them. And then in front you see the Alice stamp case. And it includes on the front of it a picture of Alice holding the baby. Now this is a picture that does not appear in the book. And then when you pull a case out, the baby has changed into a pig. We're very proud to have this original art by Byron Sewell um, illustrating a poem, an alphabet poem, by Joel Birenbaum. The art is done, and the, the writing too, in the style of Edward Gorey. And we hope someday that the Lewis Carroll Society of North America will be able to publish this. In the meanwhile, we're the first people who have ever been able to show these illustrations to the public, but we can't show them too closely yet. Um, we're very proud to have some art on loan from the Charles Schultz Museum, and it's clear that Charles Schultz was a fan of Alice in Wonderland because he featured the book several times in his Peanuts columns. The Arne Nixon Center has a collection of about 2,500 books that are related to Lewis Carroll, books by Lewis Carroll or about Lewis Carroll or something to do with Lewis Carroll, loosely connected with Lewis Carroll, Alice in La La Land. We have lots of foreign language editions. We have lots of different illustrators. Here's a German one. Hello, I'm Diane Mello, the co-curator of this exhibition. And also included in our exhibit are um, translations provided by the Advanced Illustration class in the BFA program under the guidance of Professor Doug Hansen. Uh, the assignment was to choose uh, pieces that reflected uh, portions or paragraphs or segments from the adventures, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland or Through the Looking Glass. Uh, we also included in the exhibit the ability to expand your information by using our code readers. And over here you can see an example of uh, the Cheshire Cat that we created with a barcode that uh, links to a web page and that offers a person with a smartphone or QR code application to scan and bring up the information that is not within the show but expands their knowledge of the items or the show within the show. 
We've been privileged to receive on loan two sculptures as well as maquettes from Karen Martellaro, an artist from Los Angeles. And these tables that are 45 inches tall and 24 inches in diameter um, th are the inspiration of Alice's uh, Adventures in Wonderland. Um, Martellaro uh, created these bronze um, and stainless steel sculptures um, with the element of anamorphic and anamorphic was an element used in the Renaissance period as well as the Victorian period. In the second table we see Karen Mortelaro's interpretation of chapter 2 of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. These tables reflect the images on a 360 degree view and on this side you can see the characters and Alice floating in the pool of tears. We have a first edition French translation, Braille, shorthand, and many others that you can read in the reading room. One of the most valuable items in the Lewis Carroll collection at the Arnie Nixon Center is this portfolio created and translated by Salvador Dali. It includes a frontispiece with an original color etching as well as 12 color illustrations. This gallery showcases the art of Leonard Weisgard, that is, the art for his many other books that are not his Alice books. Leonard Weisgard painted and illustrated from the 1940s through the 1970s. He did lots of little golden books, lots of different kinds of illustration, lots of different techniques, and his books are still popular, they're still in print. Leonard Weisgard um, worked from the 40s to the 70s and he used many different styles in his painting and illustration. We can see the influence of Rousseau, um, the Cubists, the Surrealists, all kinds of influences in his art. He moved to Denmark about 1970 and moved his family there and when this exhibition opened we were so happy that his daughters Chrissy and Abby came from Denmark to the opening. Leonard Weisgard won the Caldecott Medal for illustration in 1946 for these pictures for a book called The Little Island. And in this book, Down Huckleberry Hill, he was one of the first artists to use a person of color in a mainstream children's book illustration. Here we see some of Leonard Weisgard's commercial art. These two pictures were covers for The New Yorker. Here are some pictures loaned by his family that show the influence of Danish stenciling techniques. We have some black and white illustrations, again from the New Yorker. And the final two pictures were UNICEF cards. We hope you have enjoyed this tour. Thanks to all the generous donors who made the exhibition possible and to the artists and collectors who loaned us their materials. Please join us for more exhibitions, conferences, and programs at the Arnie Nixon Center. And you can find out about these at arnienixoncenter.org.